Week 7, Problem 4. A proton moves perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field at a speed of this. It experiences an acceleration of that in the x direction. Okay. When its velocity is in the z direction, determine the magnitude and direction of the field. Okay. So I'm going to minimize understanding here and just draw the picture. So this proton is moving in the z direction. So I'm going to draw that real quick. So the z direction I'm going to call positive z towards us. Oh, there we go. So this is velocity. Okay? And then it says that it experiences an acceleration in the x direction. So it's experiencing acceleration in this direction. Instead of saying acceleration though, I'm going to say force because force equals mass times acceleration and it's kind of that way. All right. So now we need to determine the uh, magnetic field. So okay, this kind of goes back to the first problem where we need to find the direction of the magnetic field. So we know, write up our equation real quick. So we know that force equals Q V cross B. And got all these guys. Okay. So V B cross B, if B is down. V cross B goes to force going that direction. So I'm going to say that magnetic field is going down. And I just I just did that by guessing and checking. Yep. So we knew that everything kind of was going to be perpendicular. So if we got V coming out and force going to the right, then B is going to be either up or down. In this case, down works. So okay, now we got the direction. So this guy will be down. But we need to find, I'm going to write this equation out real quick. So then from here then, rewriting force, we're going to have mass times acceleration. So then to find the um, magnetic field, the way I'm going to do this guy is I'm going to say, so since they're perpendicular, we know that that's the uh, sine. Sine of 90 degrees will be 1. So we have B equals M. A, M A over Q V. And I should, I'll leave this guy off. There we go. Because I don't care about vectors anymore. We already discovered the uh, um, direction. All right. So mass. All right, Mr. Proton. So the mass of a proton is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27. So we have 1.67. times 10 to the negative 27, which is not very many kilograms at all. Oh, there we go. Then we have an acceleration of 17, 1.7 times 10 to the 13th, right? Times 1.7 times 10 to the 13th, which is a lot. We then have the charge. Charge of a proton is nope, nope, nope. We have the charge somewhere. Hmm. Ah, electric charge. One point six times ten to the negative nineteenth. There we go. Oh. And then we have the velocity, which is 2.1 times 10 to the 7th. Times 2.1 times 10 to the 7th. All right. So my first thought here then is, I get suspicious when anything moves that fast. So I'm going to find out the relativistic mass real quick. So what you look for is gamma equals 1 over 
I think it's 1 minus v over c squared square rooted. This is how you figure out when things start going close to the speed of light. So velocity is 2.1 times 10 to the seventh. Um, yep. So I'm going to go to Wolfram. So I'm going to do 1 divided by quantity, quantity square root of quantity 1 minus quantity 2.9 times 10 to the seventh divided by quantity 2.99 times 10 to the eighth, which is speed of light. And then we'll do a whole bunch of brackets, parentheses. Probably have too many, but that's okay. All right, so we have, I guess it's supposed to be 2.1, isn't it? There we go. It probably won't make much of a difference. Okay, so here it looks like um, oh, and we're supposed to square this guy too. Oh, squared. This is not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Nope. If I square this guy. There we go. Alright. So, long story short, the mass will actually increase by like 0.2%. So, the fact that the proton is moving close to the speed of light is not that big a deal. So, otherwise we'd have to change the mass here, and I think that would change the answer. But it's a small effect, not a big deal. Okay, so back to the problem that we're working through. Not a lot of conceptual, just know the formula and move on, move on through life. So, I'm going to start cleaning up the, um, the exponents. So, let's see here. Uh, 19 and... 27, that's what, 8? So we got 10 to the minus 8. Oop. 10 to the minus 8 plus 10 to the 13th is 10 to the 5th. So we got 10 to the 5th. 10 to the 5th and 10 to the 7th is uh, 10 squared. 2.1 times 10 squared is 210. Alright. So now. Go to Wolfram, do 1.67. This is going to be terrible. I'm going to be like, well, 1.67 and 1.6 are close. Bam! Probably not. <laughs> uh, terrible abuse. All right, 1.7 divided by 210. And I get 8 times 10 to the negative third. Okay. Eh, it might be reasonable. Equals 8 times 10 to the negative third. And Teslas. Yep. That's, and that could be about reasonable for a for a very strong magnetic field. Because I think magnetic fields are usually measured in micro. So this is like I don't know. 8,000 8, micro Teslas, which might be possible. And it's going pretty fast, so I'm going to call it true. And then here we already decided that the magnetic field is going down. All right, that's how I approached this problem. Hopefully it helped a little bit, and I will see you on number five.